So I'm going to begin today's page by gluing down some tissue wrap. This is the postal tissue wrap from um, Tim Potts Ideology. And I'm using the collage page from Aileen's just to stick the entire piece down onto the watercolour card. Now I have had a few questions in the past about what type of watercolour card that I use. Um, and this particular piece is an 8 by 8 inch piece of 300 GSM or 140 pound um, Bockingford watercolour card and it's cold pressed, it's not hot pressed so it's not particularly smooth, it does have some tooth and texture to it, it's not the super smooth piece that you'd get with the, um, the hot press kind. So as you can see I'm trying to get the tissue paper to lay flat without too many wrinkles or bubbles in it uh, and then I'm going to give the entire piece another coating just to seal it and try and um, make sure that it's all completely stuck down before moving on to the next stage. Once I'm happy that it's completely stuck down and all sealed I'm going to begin to stick down some fragments of um, papers that I have from my collection. This is from a set called um, Le Beau Oiseau from Emerald City Crafts. Yes, that was your actual French. It means the pretty birds. So the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that I'm wearing a different kind of top today. The sleeves are just showing on the screen. Um, I actually filmed this at six o'clock in the morning and I have, wasn't even dressed. So this is my dressing gown. Yes, I know I'm arting and I'm not even dressed. Shocking. Anywho, back to the backing paper. I have two different sheets that I've torn into fragments and I'm just randomly sticking them down onto the page. When I say random, I kind of have a plan exactly where I want them to go. So the main corners I'm going to cover and then I'm going to add fragments um, coming into the page from those corners. But as with most under papers, these will probably get covered over. In fact, I know they're gonna get covered over anyway. So I'm not paying particular attention or paying um, too much detail to where they're actually going because I know that they're actually going to get painted over um, because they're only there really for texture. I know some people get really hung up about not being able to see layers underneath that you've carefully and painstakingly stuck down and then in the final piece you can't actually see them. Um, but it's like most things, you know, you can't build a house without building foundations and you wouldn't leave the house without putting on underwear. So we're back to underwear again, aren't we? But anyway, you see what I mean? It's a foundation, it's a base to build your page on. So it doesn't matter whether it gets covered up. You know, it, it's one of those things where you, you just put it down because you know that you've got a solid foundation in which to build your page on and it does add layering and texture to the page. But it doesn't really make any difference what colors you use because if you are gonna paint over, then you're not gonna see them anyway. Okay, so rather than you just sit there watching paint dry or glue dry in this case, uh, you've seen me stick some fragments down, so I'm just going to jump to the end now. So now I'm going to add some fragments from that postal tissue wrap over the top of the paper, just in a couple of places, just to add a little bit more interest. Okay, I think two pieces is enough for now. Let's not go mad, so let's get on with the drying process. It's all nice and dry now, so it's time to remove all the excess paper and tissue from around the border of the page. So now we're all neat and trim, it's time just to turn it all down with a little bit of white gesso. So I'm just going to put some white gesso on my craft mat and then add a little bit of water and then we're going to give the entire page a little bit of a whitewash. Now adding a whitewash like this seems to panic some people, but you have to remember it always dries lighter. Now we have our page covered, it's time to bring out the heat gun just to give it a little gentle dry before moving on. Now we're all dry, it's time to start adding some more colour. This is the Cobalt Green Artist Pit Pen from Faber-Castell. I'm just going to add some of the ink onto the edges of the page. This is the Caput Mortem Brown. Uh, I'm going to just add a little bit and then blend it with my finger. The Artist Pit Pens are India ink, which means that you can blend them with your fingers before they dry, but once they dry, they are permanent. 
So I'm going to repeat this process on all four sides of my page, just alternating between the green and the brown. So time to add some paint. This is the Lagoon acrylic paint from Ducrafts. And I'm just going to add a few spots onto the page and blend that in with my finger. I'm just going to randomly push it around the page just to give it a little bit of a mottled effect. Um, this isn't going to be the only colour that I'm going to add to the page. We'll be adding another one in a little while. And as you may have noticed, I am sticking to a kind of teal, turquoisey and neutral colour scheme for this page. So that acrylic paint doesn't take long to dry, so it's time to add my next layer. So to continue with that neutral theme, I'm adding on a fleshy kind of colour, which is almost um, a very pale kind of apricot, very light browny apricot colour. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing and rub that in with my finger into the page, just to add a little bit more interest into the background. So the flesh colour is really helping to tone that strong turquoisey colour down a little bit. It just helps to push it further into the background and bring that flesh colour, that lighter colour, into the foreground a bit more. So happy with those colours, so it's time for a quick tidy up. Clean off the mat, make sure we don't get any paint anywhere, and then I'll bring up the heat gun and give it a nice gentle warming to make sure that it's all nice and dry before we move on to the next step. So I'm going to be using this bird image as my main focal point. I'm going to tear off the edges just to remove that border. Uh, I'll bring in the front cover of the pack so you can have a look at what it is. This is the, the Le Beau Oiseau um, ephemera pack from Emerald City Crafts, which is an Etsy shop here in the UK. Um, this is available to purchase either as a digi download or as an actual physical paper pack. I have the physical paper pack as well as the digi downloads because I love the papers and I love the ephemera. You know I love my ephemera. So that board has now been removed, so it's time to stick it down onto the page. And I'm just going to use this glue stick from Pritt. It's just a bog standard office or craft glue stick. There's nothing special about it. Next up, I'm going to be bringing back the collage part. I'm just going to give it a good coat so it's all sealed. Um, these are digitally printed but I wanted to make sure that it is nicely sealed before I add my next bit. And this is some of the numbers from that postal tissue wrap. So I've just torn off the number strip and I'm going to glue that down onto the side of the page. Now, I'm hoping that it will go transparent. They usually do once it's actually soaked in with the glue. And then I'm just going to tear off the excess at the bottom and stick that somewhere on the page as well. Apart from the numbers, I also trimmed out some of the alphabet strips from the tissue wrap because I thought they would make a nice addition to the page as well. And I will stick down another little piece of the script um, and add that to the page. And then I'm going to grab some more tissue from um, my collection. Now this is one from uh, Paper Chase. It's like a map one from Paper Chase. You'll see it in a second. Uh, I'm going to tear some strips of that and add that to the page as well. I thought the blue was starting to be a bit too prominent so I wanted to add in um, something with a lighter tone to it. So these maps seem to fit in quite well. So as you can see I've just torn a little strip off. It does have a little bit of blue in there and it also has a little bit of that cream colour so it fits nicely. And again, with it being tissue paper, it does allow some of that background to show through, um, which helps to um, blend everything together and just makes it hang better, which makes it, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah, it, it coalesces. There's more cohesion to the page. Well, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. 
So I'm just going to add one more fragment of that postal tissue wrap in the top left hand corner and again just going to glue that down with a collage page and then I'm going to bring out the heat gun and give it a nice gentle warming to make sure it's all nice and dry before moving on. I'm bringing back those two artist pit pens so again I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. So obviously the, the edges of the page have kind of disappeared. So that border that I originally put on there has kind of been covered up. Um, you can't really see too much of it. So I'm going to add it in again. But at the same time, I'm going to start picking out some of the areas within the page. So the edges of the torn strips of paper and that kind of stuff, just to add a little bit of detail and a little bit of shading on the individual fragments and items on the page. The thing that I like about these pit pens is the fact that you can blend them into the page before they dry. Uh, it just It's a seamless way to add shadow and detail um, and it just looks fantastic. I just love these pit pens uh, and I'm gradually increasing the amount of colours that I have. Now the Artist Big Brush pit pens, uh, apparently they've stopped making those now so which is why I have the smaller versions um, which they have no plans apparently I've been told. Um, to stop making those either. So the pit pens will definitely be around for a while. So I'm just going to trim off the excess pieces of tissue paper that I added on um, later. So I just want to make sure that it's all tidy, like so. So onto the final furlong. I'm going to use the small talk stickers and I've chosen two of the little phrases from this set. This says, use your wings, which I'm going to add to the page. And the second one says, be you bravely. So it kind of goes together and I thought it was quite nice and apt with the bird focal image. Now, of course, being stickers, they are self-adhesive, but you might want to just add a quick coat of sealer, which I'm doing now, over the top, just to make sure that you don't, or they don't peel off later on. Um, this is one of the practices that I don't normally do this because they are self-adhesive, but um, I just thought I'd do it today for some strange reason. Next up, I just want to go around my word blocks. I'm using the number eight Pigma Micron Black Archival Ink Pen. So I'm just going to add a little bit of black line around the word blocks. So that is pretty much it. All I need to do now to add the finishing touch to the page is just to sign it and to date it using my date stamp from Staples. But I've just found some more tissue paper that I need to trim off first. It's always the case. There we go. Go on, just sign it, do it. There you go, it's done now. So one quick stamp and that's it. Page done and dusted. Not bad for somebody who's still half asleep and still hasn't had his first cup of coffee of the day.
So I really hope you've enjoyed watching this art journal page come together. If you have enjoyed it, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking that little button at the end of the video. It is free. All that happens is that every time I upload a new video, you'll get a little notification. It's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.